September is on the way across the country, and that means that we're going to enter the meteorological season of fall, with falling temperatures also expected in some areas faster than others. This video is going to break down exactly where the temperature and precipitation trends are expected to be thanks to our new climate pattern La Nina setting in. I have month-by-month -month outlooks for you right here in this full fall forecast. One nation weather. You may or may not already know that the climate patterns affecting us across the United States actually originate here in the eastern Pacific Ocean. The temperature of waters in this region of the sea provide the biggest impacts on mainly summer and winter jet streams, but the phases can even affect transitional seasons like fall and spring. The shift of patterns from El Nino to La Nina has been evident throughout this year. See the warmer than average ocean temperatures from earlier in 2024 with El Nino. They have now faded away to allow the cooler flow of La Nina to overall shift into place. This graph shows that change even better by representing not only those two phases, but the neutral in between with the gray bar. It is clear with this data that the neutral conditions may continue for a while based on that gray bar, but overall the cooler Pacific waters of La Nina are coming back and will be in place by the end of fall and into winter. But what the heck even is La Nina and how does it affect us? La Nina tends to cause a more variable polar jet stream with time, which can mean a more active time frame precipitation-wise with swings in temperatures for most spots further north. The southern and eastern U.S. corridors tend to be a little bit warmer and drier with this setup. However, crazily cool air will even take a shot that way now and then during La Nina phases. How will La Nina impact this fall and what other factors are going to go into the forecast? Let's go month by month right now with temperature and precipitation trends to watch. Before we dive into September's forecast, I just wanted to shout out the awesome weather model map company, Weather Bell, for what they provide. Check out their free trial link below the video to get the same exact model maps that I use in many of my forecast videos. Now, jumping into the forecast with trends for September, this could be a slightly easier month to forecast thanks to the assistance of these. The one-month temperature and precipitation outlooks made at the Climate Prediction Center. Notice the overall trends their forecasters are expecting as we go into the upcoming season. This forecast shows warmer than average temperatures being expected pretty much for everyone overall, with only areas in the far northern United States seeing enough variability to level out to a near-average prediction. For precipitation, most areas in this outlook look to stay closer to average than not, with the biggest focus for dry conditions in the central region and the best chance for storms in the east. Long-range weather models are overall favoring a similar setup to the Climate Prediction Center graphics, although there are a few small differences I want to note. With temperatures, a few models such as the CANSIPS Seasonal Guidance indicate a better chance at some cool shots into the central United States, which actually is comparable to past La Nina years for fall month trends and should be noted in a final temperature prediction. For precipitation, some models have an extensive drought-like setup going even beyond some of the central areas and into the east. With the expert forecast and model guidance in mind, here are my September temperature and precipitation outlooks. The temperature outlook is really no surprise. Along with pretty much every one else or every other model, I'm expecting a vast majority of the United States to indeed stay above average for temperatures. The focus for this warmth will likely be in the west, centered somewhere near the Four Corners region. That being said, I am expecting a little bit more in the way of some cooler shots into the Midwest, thanks to what I've looked at with models and historical trends for this type of fall. So after the month is all said and done, it could level out to be closer to average there temperature-wise. For precipitation, I side with the Climate Prediction Center with the best chance for dry conditions being near the South Central Plains. However, there are a lot of models that think it could be very dry this fall, and I think it will start out here in September, and it could go as far east as into the Ohio Valley. Meanwhile, Florida and the immediate east coast do have that best chance of staying more active, which could come even from tropical activity in addition to storms from inland. I'll discuss tropics and severe weather overviews for the entire fall a little bit later. Next up will be what my current subscribers who voted in my community poll called their favorite month of the entire fall. But before I hop into the details on that, I just wanted to remind everyone while we're talking on subscribers here, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, to consider doing that below by hitting that subscribe button. I mostly do the forecast videos for the week ahead, but I'll do these longer range ones from time to time too. If you want that kind of content, make sure you're hitting that button. I really appreciate it and would love to also answer any comments and questions you have down below. Now getting back to the video, you can see that I have a new pair of Climate Prediction Center graphics on screen, this cluster including the three-month outlook from September through November. That puts October, our next month, right in the middle. This outlook doesn't even really differ much from the single-month outlook the Climate Prediction Center projected just for September alone that I showed earlier. Could this mean a uniform fall month by month, or do some models and historic trends disagree? Let's take a look. As you can see here, we're looking at another instance where that CANSIPS guidance is showing cooler than average conditions for some central U.S. zones. And even some of our other models show a cooler October blending into a few locations. 
This extended European model guidance for seasons shows warmer than average conditions for most areas, but even it leaves a slot for more variability and even occasional cooler air in the Midwest. In terms of precipitation, it's very safe to say that multiple models show dry conditions in lots of the same areas as September is forecast to have. With those notes and more guidance in mind, here are my October outlooks. My October temperature outlook generally follows suit with the Climate Prediction Center's long-range predictions, but I've given in to some of the model output in showing a cooler splash being more likely, now and then at least, into the Midwest and Mississippi Valley. Elsewhere, it looks pretty much warmer than average overall, with the biggest focus on those conditions in the southwest. That element of the forecast will be one that probably carries through much of fall, if not the entire fall. Now, for precipitation, there's that yellow color filling up a lot of the screen again, as I'm projecting a drought that could really be setting into many south-central U.S. locations if it isn't already in there by October. Pockets of wetter conditions are expected, at least according to my outlook here, with the best chance from what I've analyzed being in the northwest and then along the east coast. That is very similar to the September outlook for the east coast with more precipitation overall. Anyway, it's time to move on now into the final individual month before our final overviews, that month being November. This outlook will definitely be a little more iffy in terms of accuracy, but here's the model data I have used to put this part of the video together. With temperatures, most models, per usual for this fall, are showing above normal conditions. Even the Can SIPs guidance shows at least average conditions for pretty much everyone, except for a few spots in the far northern part of the country. For precipitation, heavy agreement continues to show that dry zone near Texas, with most of the country variable to below average in precipitation, at least through that model output. Since there's less to show overall, let's go ahead and jump right into my projections for November. I'm expecting another warm month, and it doesn't take much guessing to figure out that it looks like it will be most prominent in the Four Corners region. I do think that the effects of the winter La Nina, though, will begin to set in for the north with some near average to even cooler than average conditions. This could also include longer freeze conditions and elevated snow chances. Speaking of snow and precipitation, here's that outlook for our Thanksgiving month. Here we go again with most of the country drier than normal or near normal. Notice how I even have the Carolinas beginning to notice the dry effects of La Nina if this projection plays out. The only area with modest confidence in a slightly wetter month is the Great Lakes region, which will almost definitely include snowfall this late into the season. Before I show the overview for the entire fall in the United States, here's a couple of notes for the whole country's secondary severe weather season, as well as a brief note on the tropics. For severe weather in fall, September is often a month of isolated chances at times, anywhere from the plains to the east coast, at least according to this Storm Prediction Center graphic. This is assuming temperatures stay favorable enough across this broad of an expanse. By October, a break is seen for most of the country climatologically, with activity slowly shifting southward again towards the Gulf of Mexico as temperatures cool in the north. November is often considered part of a sneaky severe weather season, one that you should definitely track, particularly in the deep south. One last thing to consider in addition to all these climatological notes is how the longer-lasting warmth this fall that's expected could even keep areas in the northern United States with severe weather chances longer. While that needs to be considered, there's also a contrary effect with that drier air bubble that I'm predicting. Drier air means less storms, so that could tamper down some of our fall severe weather season. Keep those severe weather factors in mind inland, and of course monitor for tropical activity this fall if you live closer to the Gulf or East Coast. Signs still indicate that what the experts have forecasted to be a very active hurricane season could still turn out to be very active mainly in September and October. Any one storm could knock the precipitation or temperature pattern off its hinges close to the landfall region in particular, wreaking havoc on my forecast and unfortunately the people there for sure. With everything so far from this video in mind, here is my official fall forecast 2024. There's lots of colored zones on this map, and the first one I'll be zooming in on will be the Pacific Northwest. The green shade here represents getting stormier, as this region will likely see increased chances of stronger low-pressure systems as the season goes along. Even more precipitation than a usual fall is possible. Next up, let's go south to the California Pale Red. This shade represents slightly warmer and drier conditions that can be anticipated throughout the fall months. East of that, this big red blob comes as no surprise for the interior west and parts of Texas. Fall's warmest and driest conditions look very likely here. If there's anything that the models agree on the most for this fall, it is this area's mildness and lack of rain or snow. 
Meanwhile, up here in Montana and the Northern Plains, we have more of a mixed bag zone. This is where I anticipate warmer and drier conditions overall that could occasionally be shaken up by a bout of colder air and even some later season snow, which is pretty seasonable here. Speaking of cooler air, that is what is most likely in the blue shaded areas of the Midwest and Great Lakes. Best chance of chill is the name of the game here as longer range guidance favors this spot more than any other for bigger cool shots now and then with some instances of snowfall also increasingly likely later on. For the Northeast United States, it should be a classic mild and active fall according to this prediction, with slightly above average temperatures and some rounds of early thunderstorms turning to later season showers and snow showers. Moving back to the Southwest, tornado territory is where fall severe weather season could certainly show its greatest impacts, but could still be limited by factors such as dry air on the edge of the western heat dome. Last but not least, the Florida, Georgia, and Carolina zone is where I'm expecting a wet start and dry finish, as the effects of tropical activity and fronts early should diminish to allow La Nina's drought to possibly flourish towards November and eventually the winter. You just saw what these color codes meant, so now I'm just going to blow them up on screen while I talk for just a moment. Thank you so much for watching this video. That's the first thing that I want to say. You've made it to the end, and now I'm talking off the script. This whole video has been scripted. It's one of my first full script videos that I have ever done. I feel very blessed to be able to go off the script in most of my videos and just look at a weather model and be able to talk to everyone about it. I feel like it is a very good passion that I have right here on the channel. So if you want to subscribe down below, it would really mean the world to me. That is it for this video. If you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I'll See you in the next one, which will be a regular forecast video.